I know, I know, I know. But you said you were skipping the RTX 4000 series graphics cards. You said you would not get a 40 series GPU. You're a hypocrite. You're an Nvidia fanboy. You're an Nvidia shill. Unsubscribe, leave the discord, write an angry comment. Now, for those of you who may not be aware, about five months ago, I made a video called why I'm skipping the 4000 series GPUs. I also said in that video that my position was a hot take. It was a bit premature because after all, I made that video before NVIDIA even confirmed the 40 series cards. We didn't even have a reveal date or an announcement date, let alone an official release date at that time. So I was working on very limited information, leaks and rumors and educated guesses at that time. And you know what? As with most leaks today in 2023, most of that turned out to be accurate. I got more right than I did wrong, but I did get a few things wrong and some of the things that I got wrong did cause me to change my mind about the cards amongst other things and we're gonna talk about that. Now, I also said in that video that if somebody wanted to send me a 40 series card, I would happily accept it, review it and use it. And much to my surprise, that is exactly what happened. I had a subscriber reach out to me and said, hey man, I just purchased two RTX 4080s and I wanna send you one for review. Now, I did not get to keep it. I did have to send it back. He sent it to me for review purposes only. His name is Eternal and Eternal, thank you again very much for that. Now, even though I had to send the 4080 back, I did end up purchasing a 4080 for myself. And that is really the whole premise of today's video. Why did I not skip the 4000 series cards? Five months ago when I made that video, my life and this channel were completely different. Five months ago, this channel was a fraction of the size that it is today. Five months ago, I was getting about seven to 800 views a video if I was lucky. I made that video fully anticipating to get about a thousand views because I expected it to do pretty good when I made it, but I never expected in my wildest dreams for that video to go on to be over 100,000 views and to still be the number one highest performing video on my channel five months later. That still blows my mind. I cannot believe that. Now, like I said, a lot has changed in five months. Now my channel is a lot bigger than it was then. I'm still small, I know, but it is a lot bigger. And I'm actually starting to get a little bit of real ad revenue now. And so that gives me a little bit more money to play with. I can now take that extra money from the ad revenue and reinvest it into this channel for different projects and things of that nature. And so that's really probably point number one. Five months ago when I made that video, I was making no money from YouTube, not really. And so I knew if I were to buy a 4,000 series card, I would have to do it out of my personal income from my job, which would take away from my family. But now that's not the case. And so now it's a completely different story. I can take the YouTube revenue, reinvest it into the channel by purchasing that card. I can do a review on that card. I can edit videos faster with the card because it has a better in-bank encoder. It has an AV1 encoder. The quality of the videos have already improved. The render time has already improved. The file size has improved. I mean, there are a lot of content creation benefits on the 4000 series cards. But at the time when I made that video, I had no idea the 4000 series cards would come with a brand new and improved in-bank encoder and an AV1 encoder. And at the time, even if you would have told me about the AV1 encoder, I would have had no idea what you were talking about. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. But now I know what AV1 is, and honestly, it is awesome. It is great for content creators. And so really, if you are a content creator, it's hard not to recommend a 4000 series GPU. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. And so it kind of made sense to take the ad revenue and reinvest it into the channel by getting a 4000 series GPU. Also, I have frame generation videos I plan on making related to this GPU. I have ray tracing videos I'm gonna make with this GPU. I can do an overall review of this GPU specifically. It's the Gigabyte Aero OC edition. It's all white. It looks absolutely phenomenal. So if you want a dedicated video on it, let me know in the comment section down below. So as I'm sure you can understand, if I'm gonna continue to do YouTube, it only makes sense to keep investing into my channel. And so as long as I'm using YouTube revenue to reinvest into my channel and I'm not taken away from my family, it, it was a win-win situation. It just made sense. So I would kind of classify that as point number one. Now for point number two, all I can say is that when Eternal sent me that 4080, I learned a lot. So first of all, if you look at my previous video, you'll see that my PC was a custom water cooling PC. I had a full loop. It looked awesome. It ran awesome. I love that PC. That PC was phenomenal. It was one of the best PCs I've ever built. But the problem was 
If I was gonna continue to be a content creator, then I needed a PC where I could quickly remove components, pop in new components for testing purposes and review purposes. And a custom water cooling loop simply does not allow for that. When Eternal sent me the 4080, it took me about two hours to take my loop apart and figure out a way to get the 4080 to fit inside of the PC. That was a hassle I did not wanna go through again. And then once I was done testing, I had to put the loop back together and that was not something I wanted to deal with. And then also not to mention, in order to water cool my RTX 3080, I had to take the former shroud off of it. And unfortunately, that shroud kind of got damaged during that process and so it's not exactly easy to get back together and so i found myself in need of a new card with an air cooler on it. And what better card to invest in than the RTX 4080 at that point? If I was already gonna go spend money on a new card that had an air cooler on it, I might as well go ahead and buy a 4080. I had already tested it, used it, loved it, might as well use it. The 40 series cards are massive and because of that, they are harder to work with for sure. But once you get the cards installed, there is a big benefit to the coolers, especially on the 4080. You see the 4080 basically has the 4090's cooler on it, but the 40 80 only draws up to 320 watts, which is the exact same as the RTX 3080. And again, that points to power efficiency, more performance per watt, which is exactly what you want in a GPU. But because the cooler is basically oversized and over-engineered, this card is whisper quiet and extremely cold. Let me explain. So the 4080 I have, again, the Gigabyte Aero OC model, comes with a dual BIOS. It has a silent option and an OC option. And out of the box, by default, it is on the OC option, and that is what I'm using. And I don't even see a point in the silent option at all. I cannot hear this card at all whatsoever in the OC mode. The card is whisper quiet. I absolutely love that. But in addition to that, the card is very cold. I see between 58 to 62 C when I'm gaming. In the worst case scenario, it might temporarily touch 64 C and then average out around 62 to 63 C. And that is not bad at all. And with my custom loop on my 3080, I would see between 48 to 52 C. Most of the time I would average around 52 C under heavy loads, occasionally touching 53, 54 C. So essentially what I'm saying is that this card is about 10 degrees hotter on air than it would be on water, presumably. But the question becomes, do I really need water? Do I really need to make this car 10 degrees colder? Will I get anything additional by making this car 10 degrees colder? And the answer is no. No, I won't. If I made this car 10 degrees colder, I would not be able to clock it any higher than I can already clock it. Now, my 4080 is already overclocked out of the box but I can push it even further, all the way to three gigahertz. Now at 2,900 megahertz, I can run this card on any game in my game library, but at three gigahertz, only some games run and then some games crash. But the point remains, making this car 10 degrees colder would not allow me to clock it any higher or make it any more stable on the games where it's already crashing. So essentially this card has made water cooling dead for me on a GPU anyway. So I think that is a huge benefit personally. And so I just wanted to share that information with you. Okay, for point number three, I tried. I tried to skip the 40 series cards. I went and I bought an AMD 7900 XTX and unfortunately it did not live up to my expectations. I made a lot of content on that card both before and after I purchased it. And if you've kept up with me, then you know I returned the card. I, I just wasn't happy with it. And also I had the reference model. And if you've been keeping Keeping up with GPU news, then you know some of the reference model designs at least have some major issues. A design flaw in the vapor chamber causing 110 C on the junction temperature, which is leading to performance issues. On top of that, my card had terrible coil wine. And so I wasn't happy with it and I returned it and I went with a 4080. So I did try. Okay, for point number four, I was happy with the performance of the 4080. I tested the 4080 after I tested the 7900 XTX. And honestly, it felt good to pop in the card and not have any noticeable coil whine. That was already a treat by itself, but then I noticed the card had noticeably better ray tracing performance and it had a new feature called frame generation that not only did my 3080 not have, but the 7900 XTX also did not have. And then on top of all of that, the rasterization performance was similar to the 7900 XTX and way better than my 3080. And so overall, I came to the conclusion that I really liked the product. The only problem I had was the price tag. And then once I realized that, hey, you know, if I like a product, but the only problem I have with it is the price, 
that means it's a great product. And honestly, the 4080 is a great product. It just has a bad price tag. And so finally I concluded that, hey, I like the card, the price is bad, but I have the YouTube income to help offset the price. So get the card. And ultimately that's what I did. And finally, I wanna finish with this. I see a growing problem within the PC community. I see it in other communities. I see it in my community. And that is a lack of willingness to change your mind based on new information. What we should be willing to do is receive new information and then formulate a new opinion or a new conclusion. And that is exactly what I've done with the 40 series cards. Previously, I had limited information and I made an opinion based on that information and then I made a video based on that information. But now I have received new information. I have now updated my opinion based on that information and I have now made a new video based on that information and that opinion. And that is what we all should be willing to do with all products, all services, all whatever, fill in the blank. But unfortunately, I have seen many people not be able to do that. And so for all of you in the comment section asking me, hey, why do you have a 4080? I thought you were skipping the 40 series cards. I hope this video answers your question. In closing, I wanna say this right here. Both Nvidia and AMD are equally guilty of lying to you and misrepresenting information in performance numbers for their marketing material. They're both equally guilty, they just are. Now, with all of that being said, I'm not gonna sit here and recommend an inferior product just so the logo will be red instead of green or green instead of red. That's just how it is. The 40 series cards are very expensive and you can even say overpriced in most cases. But pricing aside, they are very good products. Now, if you find a 40 series card with a price that you are comfortable with paying, then go for it. They're great cards, but that will be up for you to decide. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate your time. If you liked the video, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.